Well met. Well then. sets off for Martira. As they watch the setting sun sink under the horizon, their gauntlet runner arrives in a land grown thick with trees. The wildlife retreats to safety before the sunlight fades, leaving only deafening silence. The anticipation that follows a journey's beginning swells in their hearts. No, all right then. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. That reminds me.
The city ruins come to view. This place once flourished through the excavation of magla crystals by migrant workers. The work was hard, but the miners were hardy and spirited, and the promise of riches lured many here. In its time, it may have rivaled Brylehaven. However, the promise of strong magla drew forth the humans. As tragedies climbed, it became a ghost town. Now only the threatening glimmer of the crystals remain, and with the promise of abandoned riches followed the thieves. For some reason, though, they all seem to scurry home empty-handed, gripped by fear. This is... Everything okay? Right. <sighs> All right. Hey! As the sun sinks below the horizon, the Gauntlet Runner arrives in a land dense with trees. The glow of the Gauntlet Runner pierces the dark, warmly enveloping them in its light. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Quiet! I see. Two.
Come on. Maybe you got the better of me last time, but you're about to get some payback. Give me a break, lady. Ever heard of learning from your mistakes? Sorry, but we don't intend to lose either. Ooh, big talk. Well, I'm willing to rewrite my record if that's what it takes to be queen. My people are suffering as we speak. Who's gonna save the parapus if I don't give it all I've got? I promised them all I'd become queen. You're all decent people, got nothing against you, but I'm not holding back. Let's give you a try, eh? Hey? Let's have a spot of inventive ingenuity. It looks like you've gotten strong. Now accept your so fate. Slash! <laughs> Observe. Let justice prevail. Freeze. That's nothing. I shall vanquish evil. How do you like this? I won't hold back! Why are you so strong, damn you? But this... Look out! This is a joke! I'll use what I must. No. Why? Oh, why? I trained so much for this. This isn't supposed to happen. Satisfactory. Make it happen. Uh. Uh. It just ain't right. In that case. Oh. I'm not letting anyone die. As the shadows are stretched to their limits before darkness takes them, the Gauntlet Runner arrives in a balmy wetland. Nocturnal creatures who lay dormant beneath the fens in the light rise to seek out their prey. Meanwhile, 
The party rests their weary souls, fatigued by the long journey, under the protection of the Gauntlet Runner. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Hello? Hello, Mr. Captain! Rise and shine, what? Almost there! Royal Haven. It's been a while. You've been before. My parents took me once when I was a boy. I remember the day we arrived. Waking up to the smell of the ocean. The place was crowded beyond belief. Everything was so different from our hometown in the countryside. I felt much the same when I reached the royal capital. Quite a sight compared to my little village. With naught but fields and mountains. To be sure. And where are you from, Hulkenberg? You cannot guess? Surely Montario in the east? Why, the Hulkenbergs are one of that nation's most prominent aristocratic houses, if not foremost among them. You don't say. Well, yes. Though I've no close relationship with my parents, I've hardly seen them since I left home. I see. Suppose we've all come a long way, haven't we? Seems we'll make it to the exhibition just in time. With a master at the helm, you are bound to, eh? <laughs> I really hope Joanna shows up. We resolved to trust her. So we simply watch and wait. Right. Everyone set and steady? Welcome, ladies and gents, to the Coastal Crown Jewel, Port Brylehaven. Port Brylehaven, capital of the Principality of Oceana. The western annexed state of Ukronia, a vivacious city, Brylehaven is port of call to ships of both trade and war, bustling with hardy sailors. From the natural wonders caused by magna to the Colosseum's contests of strength, people flock here to see the marvels of a city that never sleeps. The sea guides the gauntlet runner into the city alongside a warm, salty breeze.
Sancta Cadeau. You've brought us quite a magnificent head. How do you think it'll stack up against your competitors? With the warrior monks at my side, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. But I won't presume to know the rankings. I humbly leave it in God's hands. Lineup's a bit conventional for my taste so far. Oh, here comes our mysterious little underdog now. Stir things up a bit here, will you? Would you look at these spectacular gauntlet runners? They must all be worthy of kings. Looks like Luis is still the only one with a sky runner, though. No, no. I'm sure those blasted clergymen have some mechanism for it, too. The Sanctus Church funded the sky runners to begin with. If you can call that flying, of course. All just piffling about with levitation magic. Only a passing acquaintanceship to real aerodynamics. Birds have never needed magic to fly. Just the mechanical ingenuity of the feathered wing. That's the kind of breakthrough I'd like to make. You'll see, eh? One day, I'll make those wings reality, and we'll soar like birds. I'm looking forward to it. Good. I'll have you run in the sky with me. Mark my words. If it isn't the pretentious little gallant and his cronies. If it isn't the walking headache. Well, well, well. No head to be seen. Weren't you talking big about chasing down that Heisme fiend? You're referring to me, yes? <laughs> You're the man. This is a joke, is it? He's your great and terrible bounty. You know there's still time to drop out before you humiliate yourself in front of the masses. Say what you wish. He is one of us. It is not his head we are offering. Truly? You're allied with a wanted criminal? Are you all mad? Oh, your public humiliation will be quite a sight. Come, Hector. And that was... A candidate, and one of Luis's henchmen. We don't exactly see eye to eye. Confound it. No damn parking spaces left. Well, let's look for somewhere a bit less unpleasantly populated. Tomorrow is finally the exhibition to present all the heads. I really hope Joanna shows up. You needn't all sleep here tonight, you know? I can stay and wait for the cavalry. Not to give the old girl a tune-up anyway, don't I? Tis much appreciated. In that case, we should look for an inn about the city. Ah, and we must sample the local delights. They far better seafood than in the capital. I can't wait. To stop for rest, surrounded by fine food is an uncommon blessing. If you're sure, Nurus, then we'll leave it to you. Me? I long for a proper bed. So be it. Let's find ourselves some lodging. Really? This is a joy! All right, then. Oh, this blooming hate. <laughs> Can we talk? Hey! Hey! Proper races. All right, then. Oh, God. Hello there. My money's on Santa Bexford. 
Real cheap. Ain't this a pickle? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Greetings. Well then. Can we talk? This is on... Feel free to stop by. Say. Whoa! Hmm. Yes. Huh? Well, okay then. Yes. <laughs> oh, this blooming hate. <sighs> what is it you require? Enjoy your kind of 
freaky. <laughs> Well, should have figured they'd be out of the upper rooms with all the travelers in town. Tis a far cry from the runner, at least. I am so glad to stretch my legs again. Did you see that giant bug just now? It was like the size of my head. It's gotta be poisonous. Oh, pull yourself together. It's just a b b b b insect. Well, listen to you. You can't have lived in a giant sandworm den and been afraid of bugs, surely. Hence, the hut. That's why you lived in that hut. Uh, more importantly, we must discuss tomorrow's proceedings. Right. We meet up with Joanna, then get to the exhibition after that. Joanna will admit to the crime. The guilt of a sanctuary, especially of her status, will guilt Forden by association. That should make an impression on Luis. Yet for all this, we need Joanna herself. Do you truly think she would join us? We have to trust her. She chose to offer her own head instead of the monsters. If you ask me, she'd not have done that if she didn't believe it truly was her child. At least in part. I believe she expressed genuine parental love. I want to believe that, at least. And what if she ends up not showing up? I mean, you're the one who got the worst of all of this in the first place. If it comes to that, you still got my head for the days. After all, the bounty still says I'm a kidnapper. Balder Dash will not sacrifice an innocent life for our victory. But your offer speaks highly of your spirit. Right. We've done what we can do. All that's left is to keep our chins up and face the competition head on. Too early yet to retire for the night. We could drop by one of the local pubs, listen for what perks our ears, and while we're at it, might as well sit down to a proper supper, eh? <laughs> could be my last, after all. Oh, ha ha, very funny. What are we without beauty? What do we care for promises and speeches from repulsive mouths? Beauty is everything, and it is time our country reflected that. Sounds like the candidates have started their speeches. Let's listen in for a bit. With all skills and talents equal, would you see the crown atop an ugly head? or a handsome one. Beauty is power. Lack one, you should lack the other. When I take the throne, all the hideous will be stripped of their titles. Together, we shall build a nation ruled only by radiant, everlasting paragons of beauty. <laughs> Well, he has a point about what people tend to follow. What? This really doesn't bother you. It isn't right. You'd rather wait for a king who was always right, then? Enough about appearance. A beautiful face cannot win wars. Without military power, the crown's voice means nothing! When I am king, I will establish a unified nation with the Roussant tribe at its head! Our tribes. Our status. They mean something. You could stray from a monolith, but it will still remain. There can be no true peace without using the power we command. Hear, hear, for Rusev pride. What pride is there in seizing power by force? Disgraceful. When I'm queen, all the land's corrupt upper classes will be wanted men. We'll have our guillotines sharpened and our wallets open. Those who thought to tilt the world with their heavy coppers will be ahead lighter. We'll split their fortunes and toast to our health. Preach it, Katharina. You're just what this land needs. Wouldn't the first target be the one on the throne, then? 
everyone's just shouting all their ideals out. These candidates are all pathetic. Nobody here even compares to Lord Luis. Luis isn't even in the running, lad. Poor Blight is afraid of losing to Sanctifex Ford. You've got it backwards, geezer. He's just not wasting his time on these windbags. I confess, I know not how to feel. This unprecedented. Never before have our citizens come together in the street in broad daylight and shared their true feelings on king and kingdom. Indeed. Is this really the kind of change His Majesty wanted? Maybe I'm overthinking it. Let's go in. If we hang around too long here, we're bound to get dragged into a nasty argument. When I'm king, pleasures will rule the city. A bar on every block and a flagon in every hand. All you can drink, all year round. Woo! Next round's on, Loveless. Let fools be content with their fool dreams. Grant me the crown, and I will make our kingdom powerful beyond imagining. Most powerful? Don't really mean anything, does it? Aren't you another one of Luis's flunkies, hound? Stop barking and get back to your master. Always about that goddamn Luis. I've been in the guard just as long as he has, you swine. Quite a lively crowd. Looks like a great many of them came all the way here to watch the competition. That lad there, he's an elder, isn't he? Are you a candidate too? Well, strike me down, you're right. Never seen one of you blokes before. Might be out of luck in the race, though. You'll not stand a chance. <laughs> Pay him no mind. A drunk's words weigh nothing. Wow, there are fish swimming in front of the store. Ah, I've heard of this. Tis on the customer to fish up a catch, and the chefs will prepare it for eating. I admit, I'm curious. Shall I sing a shanty for you as you take up rod and reel, Captain? It doesn't look quite, uh, natural. By all means, let us try it. Did she even look at it? <sighs> Why, tis, tis delicious! The aroma of the sea simply floods the mouth. Ah, and what splendid crunch it has. I guess I'll try a bite. I mean, they wouldn't let us fish up anything outright inedible. I hope. At least we'll die together. Oh, well, I was the one who suggested fishing. Right. The noble thing to do is see it through. It's rather slimy for my liking. <laughs> I said nothing since Hulkenberg seemed to enjoy it so much, but if you're going to eat an unknown fish, might you not at least sear it first? Tis fine enough without, I say. You need way higher standards, lady. Excuse me, friends. Don't mean to interrupt your meal. I'm Batlin, a church crier for the tournament. Maybe you... Remember me. Sounds like you made a hell of a splash in Martyra, huh? Felling a vicious beast's one thing, but not many candidates took it... figuratively. How did you hear about all this? It's a crier's business to hear things. So... do you have a head ready? Well, let's see. Got a head right here, I suppose. Lips sealed, huh? Well, I'm certainly looking forward to the exhibition then. Especially considering the diversity of your little party. 
I've always preferred to chase an interesting lead over a sure bet. Can't help it, I'm afraid. So, I have a keen eye out for you, all right? That cry is an odd one. Not really what you'd expect from a Sanctus promoter. Who is he? Rumor has it that young candidate hasn't brought a head. Wonder what he's playing at. Whatever it is, he's about to get a sharp lesson in the ways of the world, poor lad. I think he's worth keeping an eye on. Keep it under your hats, chums, for his power may rival Count Luis. I think he's just the ingredient we need to uh, spice this race up a bit. Right. Just got back from the pub, did you? You wound me. <laughs> uh, nobody trusts a radical, huh? I expect you'll see for yourself. Is on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. The man sloshed again. What happened to waiting for our guests? You utter buffoon! Is this why you volunteered to stay behind? <laughs> Seems like Joanna and Barden aren't here yet. Oh, I feared this might happen. And we've no other head to offer the judges. It is a precarious position. No. Now come. Ah, I'm going to splash some water on my face. Ah! What? My sincerest apologies. I wasn't expecting anyone to come in. You see... How did you come to be here? Explain yourself! Is something the matter, Barden? They were here the whole time? I'm so terribly sorry. We heard the gauntlet runner had a washroom, so we thought we'd freshen up a bit. I bathed first and was resting in the back room, contemplating my final day as a sanctuary. Sir Nurus over there very decently let us in to wash up. I couldn't stand it, old thing. Her heart would bring any right-thinking man to tears. Could have run like a ballet thief in the night, but here she is, washing away her sins. It was more than a chap could bear, I say. Needed a drop of the grape and grain just to get myself through it. The bottle's barely any emptier. Was a drop really all it took to get you drunk? Oh. Please do not blame the poor man. Talking to him has eased my heart for the trials to come. I cannot let myself betray you and regress to my vile delusions. I only sought to atone with myself before my sins are duly punished. I understand. Thank you for coming. Then, as we agreed, please confess before the crowd when the time comes. To be honest, I'm hesitant to turn you in now you've genuinely decided to repent. I mean, we're hardly icons of virtue ourselves. In fairness, you're a woman of status, and it'll be a big crowd. We're not looking to instigate a public stoning here. You can explain yourself freely, in your own words. We can't ask anything more than that. Thank you. Truly, I've felt so much more at peace since last we spoke. The fog has only cleared further, giving me clarity of purpose. The fog, huh? Thank you for everything. I do hope you win the throne. Yes. 
I intend to. Whoever the crown goes to, we're at least going to make sure it isn't used for evil. At last, it seems our preparations are set. We need only trust that our plans will bear fruit. Thank you all for waiting. The very first round of the Tournament for the Throne, the Exhibition of the Brave, is about to begin. Our monarchs-to-be will now present to the people the heads they seized to demonstrate their power as worthy of the throne. At a later date, when the second round is announced, the faces on the King's Rock, that is to say, the candidates with the top 20 approval ratings, will pass the first round. 20? Tis a great many eliminations in but one round. I was hoping we'd at least make it through the first, but it might not be that simple. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your eyes to the lineup of all the gorgeous faces at the judges' table, starting with His and Her Highnesses of Oceana and Montario. Oh, it's her ladyship. Lord Montario's here too, eh? And the armor on that fellow over there? A general, is he? And of course, we have the one, the only, the people's favorite, our guest from the Sanctus Church. Better known as the Miracle Saint, healer of all ills, presenting the lovely Lady Rella Cygnus. Saint? Who's this? Someone fill me in. I've been literally living in a hole. A brilliant healer. We've met, though a long time ago. Even as a student, she was already considered the kingdom's best in her field. Looks like the crowd's on your side, milady. Can you give us a few words about what's on your mind as you take on the judge's mantle? Uh, well, I'm afraid you've rather got me on the spot. <laughs> Hello, all. This city sure has, um... Great seafood, <laughs> and, uh, well, sea creatures. Fascinating, aren't they? There's so much we still don't know about them. Um, oh, I, I did hear about a legend of some monster in the eastern seas of Oceana. <laughs> Imagine, the mind races. I'm hoping I can investigate those sightings while I'm here. That's just great, Lady Rella. I'll just stop you there, clock's ticking and all that, but we're thrilled you're enjoying your stay. Sometimes I can hardly believe you're my sister. Still not much of a public speaker, are you? So she's... a saint? Well, she seems like a nice enough lady. We'd better stop worrying about her and focus on ourselves. I don't see Luis anywhere, but I bet he's got eyes in the crowd. Now, the time has come! Let the exhibition of the brave begin! First up is a respected gentleman of the church, Guido, the head of the monk soldiers of the Crown Theocracy! I've no taste for needless killing. Therefore, I chose a mark with meat, abundant and edible. After the judging, it will be served in a banquet for the poor. A stand-up fellow, my good people! Strength and compassion in one package! He's got the crowd on his side right from the start! Now, is there anyone who can top this? I can. And we have a challenger. Second in line is the church's direct opposition, the spearhead of Count Luis's supporters, Gladell the Black Hound. One look at the head and I know what you're thinking. Bit small, isn't it? Well, I can bloody well tell you I'm not like this smarmy git who fished up his dinner. 
I'll tell you what this is. Behold, the head of a hideous human! Where's your proof? Y yes, the young son's right. How do we know that's really a human? What drivel? Look at the thing. You think a normal beast could have a face like this? Probably just made the damn thing yourself. Oh, useless as ever. Did it never occur to him that the average citizen has never seen a human? Now, now, everyone, let's have a little composure, please. Candidate Gladell, we're very much obliged. You may step down. Now, on to the next! Is that thing? Is that the monster of the Eastern Sea? Someone took the beastie down. Who did the deed? I'd heard tell of a monster tormenting the people of this beautiful port city. I could do no less than grant them respite from their suffering. Such is the duty of those with power. Who expected anything less? His Eminence Fallen is simply in another class. Suddenly, the critics have all gone quiet. All I hear is gratitude. Gordon's trophy is more impressive than I expected. How are we going to make a stronger impression than that? It'll be fine. If he'd gone after us, the reaction would mean we'd have been written off no matter what we presented. Let's count ourselves lucky, and trust in our strategy. Now, now, no dirty looks, you lot. Next is the Pagan Assassin's Prize. Let's see what head we've got now. Thank you, Candidate Julian, for that helpful, exhaustive, and I think exhausting, explanation. Whew. Now, we've had quite a succession up here, but our last is coming up now. This should wrap up our show. Now, if the last candidate, the Elden Boy, would please join us on the stage. <laughs> Where's the head? Uh, your pardon, madam, but... Would you happen to be the Lady of Martyra? The Joanna, the Sanctoress? Indeed. The head they've brought is mine. The impudence. You dare offer an honored lady of the church before these judges. This is not to be borne. I've got something to say to you, too. That you chief there. Isn't that Heisme? The same damn criminal you were supposed to be chasing? That's the infamous Heisme. The huge chief of all things. <sighs> this. After we saved your hide on the road. Silence! He may be a former knight, but now he's a heinous criminal who stooped to kidnapping. Anyone who claims themselves his ally should be disqualified on the spot. Please, wait. I have something I must confess to you all. You speak of the kidnappings that terrorized my home, Martyra. I am here to confess that the true culprit behind those atrocities was me. I was the caretaker of a hideous human in the basement of my castle. And to feed it, I abducted the innocent people of my own city. What? Absurd. Speak sense, woman. Master Heisme is innocent in all this. He was framed for crimes performed by my hand and in my name. And I, Bard, captain of Martyr's Guard Corps, stand to vouch for all that she said. Just so. It was this young candidate who killed that human, cleared me of the false charges, and dispelled the shadow over Martyra. 
Thus, here I stand. My head is his to offer. That's... Well, that's quite a turn of events! We have our head, ladies and gentlemen, and it's unlike any we've seen yet! How is this believable? She's an imposter. She's got to be. Of course. That, or they're putting words in the poor woman's mouth. A sanctuary would never. What will his eminence fall and do? <sighs> the Honorable Master Godot should know whether I and my words can be trusted. <sighs> Tis true to the last word, isn't it? Yes, Your Eminence. Without question. Young candidate, you have done well to bring about her repentance. Now, justice must be rendered. What? Right here and now? Your Eminence, a moment! Thank you for your concern. But I have no objections. For a sinner like me, to confess the truth to the people has already been more than I deserve. O oh, new king. It is my hope that you will rid the world of its twisted prejudices and common cruelties. Please, leave this country armed with the truth. I will do my best. Forden turned in the biggest head, then our dark horse here has certainly turned in the heaviest. What an upset, ladies and gents! Who could see this coming? <laughs> Those crazy kids have done it again. What a show! Mm. 